Hello everyone. So, today we will continue with our uh, engineering design criteria and guidelines by using the ICS toolkit. So, if you have not already downloaded this particular um, uh, toolkit that I mentioned in the previous class, please download this toolkit right now. We will try to work on the uh, toolkit uh, together. So, uh, the address that is given over here, when you uh, log on to that particular address, you will be asked to create a username and password in order to be able to download the file. So, please uh, create the same and download the file and then continue with the video. So, let us see how this uh, toolkit is supposed to be used. It is called as the ICS toolkit. So, in this toolkit, you can start from the start sheet. So, you can see there are multiple number of sheets over here, start, guide, LCD strategies and so on. On this start sheet, if you click on life cycle design strategies, then you will directly go to that particular page. If you click over here, you will come back to this start page. Say I go to qualitative assessment of existing product or system, I directly go to that particular page. If you press the mm, question mark, mm, it will download a particular file for you, which will mm, help you in mm, how to use this particular tool. You can also go to this uh, second tab, which is called as the guide tab to understand what this particular tool is. So, what all we can use this tool to do is, I can go and read about the life cycle design strategies. I can also do a qualitative assessment of existing product or system. Then I will set the functional unit and the priorities or improvements. Then I have a eco ideas board. Then I will do life cycle design strategies uh, evaluation. The evaluation can be either done by using the simplified in evaluation, normal evaluation or deep evaluation. You can do all the three, you can also select one of them depending on your requirement as well as the time available to you. And finally, is the radar diagram which will display you visually the priorities and the improvements achieved. So, let us go to the guide. So, if we enlarge this particular guide, you will see that it talks about ICS is composed by the following tools, qualitative assessment of existing product or system. It is a set of qualitative checklists for each of these six life cycle design strategies and are given to help achieve the environmental assessment of existing or reference product or system. The ICS toolkit is only meant for the environmental dimension. As you had already seen in the previous uh, lecture, when we were talking about the engineering design and guidelines, we were talking only on the environmental um, uh, aspects. So, for each of the criteria, it is then possible to define the rela relative priority. I can give a high priority and it uh, stands for H medium priority M, low priority L and no priority N. Then we will define the functional unit and priorities or improvements board. So, it is here the functional unit will be put on and we will use a report, you will use a table to def, uh, say whether there is a radical improvement, incremental improvement, no change or the idea has gone worse. Then you have an uh, eco ideas board, which presents before you all the criteria and guidelines and by using those criteria and guidelines, you can ideate on that particular board. Finally, you go to the radar diagram where you select the best ideas generated and you do a analysis of the same. Finally, there is LCD strategies pursuing qualitative evaluation, where you do a evaluation by saying whether it is a radical improvement, incremental improvement, no improvement or it is going worse. Again, it can be done at the level of simplified uh, assessment, which is at the strategy level, normal, which is at the sub strategy level, deep at the guidelines level. So, when we go into more depth, you will know what each of these mean. Important do not change the name of each sheets, because the sheets are connected to each other using certain formula. So, if you change the name of the sheet, there might be problems which might come. 
uh, how to optimize the visualization it is also very important this is an excel based sheet and you use it in um, excel um, only say for example you can also open an excel file using few other softwares but uh, the functionalities offered by this particular sheet might not all those functionalities might not be available when you open this file in all those platforms i have not checked it how it behaves when i open it on a mobile platform but uh, maybe some of the functionalities do not work so it's always better that you open this excel sheet in microsoft excel on your mm, computer so how to optimize visualization in the menu bar click view or full screen in the menu bar click view or zoom a window will pop up at this pop up window click the option custom and insert a value that allows the visualization of all elements of the sheet then uh, you can also click view or full screen with the right button of the mouse click on sheet 1 at the bottom of the page and select all sheets so these are certain navigations on how to mm, navigate through this particular excel sheet so this is the full view so let's go back to the home page again and let's start with the first step which is life cycle design strategies so yesterday we discussed seven strategies for mm, the same here they have been grouped into six because i have combined in this material and energy consumption reduction together whereas in my mm, uh, slides presented mm, in the last lecture they were mm, uh, separate groups and elaborated in that so my first strategy is used extension or intensification optimizing the life span of products is to design for extend extending product and its components life span and for intensifying product and its components use a product with longer life span than another similarly functioning one generally determines smaller environmental impact a product with accelerated wear will not only generate ultimately waste but will also determine further impact due to the need for replacing it production and distribution of a new product to replace its functions involves the consumption of new resources and further generation of emissions hence we should target use extens extension or intensification in when i say extension i mean mm, uh, extending the period uh, of time over which it can be used or intensification means over say a period of 10 years when the product has good life span mm, uh, i do more usage of it so per day usage can be increased something like that then the next one is resource that is both material and energy consumption reduction so reducing resources denotes design aimed at reducing the usage of materials and energy of given product or more precisely of given service offered by that type of product for the entire product life cycle so you have to consider the entire product life cycle from pre production to you have to also consider the design and development phase of the product so the next one is material life extension so design adding environmental value to materials within a product by avoiding premature disposal by reprocessing them to obtain new prime secondary materials by recycling or composting or burning them to recuperate their energetic content then comes toxicity reduction where again you are talking about toxicity reduction both in terms of material and energy sources then the last one is resource conservation or biocompatibility so design with the aim to save resources for future generations preferring renewable resources or at least non exhaustible ones so once you have read through these you can keep on coming back to this particular slide depending on your requirement let's go back to home again now i will go to the next step which is qualitative assessment of existing product or system so if i see this particular board it says use extension or intensification first i will have to set a priority 
So, when you click here there is a drop down menu, you select one of these priority levels. Not necessarily you have to select the priority first and then you do the evaluation, you might also type the evaluation and then you can select the priority level. When you select the priority level, so when I selected low, you can see in this particular box it automatically got selected. Say I am selecting medium, the priority change. You are not supposed to change anything over here, these will change automatically. So, this is my first sheet in which I am trying to do a qualitative assessment of existing product or system. When I want to go to the next sheet, this is the next sheet, I will have to click over this and I go to the next sheet. I can click over here again and I can be back to the sheet. So, this is how you can navigate between the 6 checklist, uh, 6 criteria items uh, to do this qualitative assessment of existing product or system. Now, here are the checklist questions which helps you to do an evaluation of the existing system or number. So, say the first question is, is the product or system a disposable one used only one time excluding consumables? Say for example, injection syringe that is a one time use product, it is a disposable product. Say a sa shampoo sachet, the sachet is a one time use product. So, after that one time use, you throw it away which means it has very low amount of usage. So, you answer this question. So, in case I am doing it for a shampoo, shampoo sachet, I can say that shampoo sachet is one time use product. After this, the multi layer packet is discarded. You can also add extra information say for example, the multi layer packet cannot be recycled because it is not profitable enough to separate the layers. Also, collection is a challenge. When I go to the other criteria for qualitative assessment, so let us see this LCD design. So, you see we have used extension intensification, I have resource or material and energy consumption, I have material life extension toxicity reduction and resource conservation of biocompatibility. So, there might be situations in which I can put some of these statements in those uh, pointers also, but when you are start writing down it is advisable that you start writing down all the problems that you see. Maybe on a uh, next question level where you can answer something similar, you will again put it down no harm in doing that. So, I answered my first question, then I have my second question, is the product or system with short lifespan excluding consumables? So, the difference between the first one is here I am disposing of, here is it with a short lifespan. So, the mm, uh, product is made in a manner that it has a very short lifespan. Say for example, mm, I have a mm, mobile phone, it is designed in a manner with certain kind of components which have very short lifespan. So, that can be a particular answer to this uh, question, if you are doing this analysis for that kind of a system. Then are disposable packaging used? So, again you can see if uh, I was doing this same for uh, shampoo uh, sachets, so question 1 and question 3 are related. Does the product or system or some of its parts tend to wear out easily? So, you can see these questions are related to all those criteria that we were discussing in our previous lecture on the what can make a um, engineering um, design criterion guidelines list. You also have something called as uh, others because these are just guidelines and it might not suit for all your purposes. Say for example, I am talking about 
uh, agricultural machinery. Now, in that particular um, context, everything is about the product or the system. But say, what about the result that particular machine is producing? If you do not find that any of these questions are trying to target the results produced by the um, uh, machine, then you can add those questions in the others. But those questions should be related to use extension and intensification. Once I have completed my evaluation over here, I will give it a priority level. So, I realize that the priority level over here is very high. So, I change the priority level. Now, let us go to the next one, which is material consumption reduction. Again, it follows similar kind of a uh, um, hierarchy. By default, all of these priorities are um, uh, set at high. So, you have to go everywhere and change the priority after you have done your evaluation. All of them follow the same structure. They have certain checklist questions and you have a question others. You can also open up the um, uh, presentation that um, uh, contained all the engineering design guidelines and criteria. Some of those questions, uh, some of those uh, trigger points can help you also in identify more questions in the others category. So, after I have done for material consumption, I will go to energy reduction board, similar strategy. Once energy consumption and reduction is done, then you can go to. So, you can see because I am on this energy reduction page, this one is highlighted in a different color as compared to this one. Then I go to material life extension, then I go to toxicity reduction. Let us set a different criteria level, different priority level over here. So, let us say I give a priority level of low and here I give a priority level of in resource conservation of biocompatibility none. So, now you can see I have a high, high, high and a low and a none. Let us also change the criteria over here. Let us give it a medium. So, after I am done with this whole thing, so say I am I have reached over here. Then what I can do is again click on the home button. Once I click on the home button, I will be directed to go to this third step. So, in the third step, it is a setting up your functional unit and the priorities improvement. So, what is the functional unit? So, it is the unit on which you are going to do your measurement. So, like we had already discussed in our life cycle design um, uh, strategies, how to set a functional unit, you can set a functional unit, you can also set a declared unit. So, you can go back to the lectures to understand a functional unit or a um, uh, declared unit. So, let us say um, uh, kg of sachets per liter of shampoo. So, I declare that that is my functional unit. Now, you can see that I had set these priorities, they have already been populated over here. Because they are already populated over here, you should not make any changes to this particular place. You should not also, these are all formula set over here, so should um, do not make any changes. Also, these uh, uh, should not be changed because it is not here that you make the changes. You have to go to the appropriate uh, slides where you make uh, the changes after doing analysis. So, as we discussed, we have eco, um, uh, we have a life cycle design strategy per, uh, um, evaluation step. So, when I do an evaluation over here, so say I want to do a simplified evaluation. So, when I change this criteria, say I change this criteria to radical improvement. Now, let us go back to the functional unit and priorities. So, when I go to this particular um, uh, radar diagram, I can select the evaluation level because I changed my um, uh, data on the simplified level. So, when I select the level over here as simplified, I get my data for 
use extension and intensification which I had said that I have got a good level of improvement. So, you can see this has been populated already a radical improvement in use intensification. So, let us go to the eco ideas board. In the eco ideas board, you have 6 different eco ideas board. Each eco idea board is for one of the criteria that is use extension or intensification. Again the same strategy is followed over here, I am highlighted by this. I can go to the next board which is for material consumption and reduction. So, all your criteria, you can also navigate through this board when you become more comfortable, you will know which one to click. So, you can see all the criteria that we discussed in the engineering design criteria, they are criterion guidelines, they are all listed over here and here you have a box for idea. You can create more boxes for ideas, that does not affect the program in any particular ma manner. This is just an idea board, it does not transfer any information, any data to any other sheet. What this sheet helps you is at a glance see ok, to use intensification and extension I had given a high priority. So, I will have to have lots of ideas in a manner a criteria on which I have high priority, I should have more radical improvement. Let us say I want to while I am trying to do to generate ideas, I want to go back to my slide, this slide where I had done evaluation against that criteria. You can always do that by using this particular channel. Unfortunately, over here there is no way to go back to that particular board. So, you have to do this. So, you can come here read your evaluation and again go back to this particular board and do this activity back and forth. Also, there is no relationship, there is no sequential relationship that you have to do this uh, EQA1 first and then EQA2, you can do it any uh, sequence. You can also do EQA1 first and then you can go to the E idea 1 generation and start doing idea generation. So, it is not uh, required to be uh, sequential. So, here you can double click and try type your ideas. I can also copy paste this and I can have my idea too for this particular criteria. Once done, you will go to E idea 2, E idea 3 and repeat this particular process. Once you have generated all the ideas, I can go back to home again, then I will have my, I can do this evaluation on simplified normal or dig. Let us see what simplified is. So, if you see this particular um, chart, here it has automatically populated what priority I had set for each of those um, criteria. So, I have high, 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 medium, low and none. Now, what I can do is I can say what kind of improvement I have brought in. You really do not need to populate anything for these things. So, you are doing a very simple analysis, you are doing an overview analysis. This one is a very qualitative analysis and and very overview level. You just do not think too much into depth of each and every component, you are also not getting anything um, in terms of numbers. So, let me say ok, I got radical improvement over there, I got incremental improvement here, I got worse over here which is not very a good situation where you have given high priority. Then I say mm, uh, this was radical improvement, then I say I brought in no improvement in this particular case, you can say not applicable. So, not applicable can be used only when you have none over here. In case you have put anything other than none over here, you should not say not applicable. Then I will again go back to home and I will go click on my radar diagram. Here at the level, so here at level you select simplified because I have done my simplified evaluation. So, against each of them you can see ok, if there was a priority high. So, this outside circle is meant for priority high, the inside circle is meant for priority medium, 
here I have low priority and here I have low prior. Mm, okay, sorry, mm, I made a mistake. So, these circles are meant to show what is the improvement level which has been mm, brought in. So, mm, the outside circle tells about mm, very radical improvement the next layer of circle tells you incremental improvement this one says that there has been no improvement and this one is for uh, getting uh, things worse so you can see that so if you see here for use intensification you had given high priority and you have got radical improvement so if i go to use extension i had uh, given a high priority and on that i have got a radical improvement so my radar diagram is somewhere over here in case of material reduction i had high and incremental improvement so my radar diagram is at this particular point say for example for the mm, toxic uh, for the mm, resource conservation which is over here i had said it is not applicable and i had given low priority also so as a result this radar diagram pointer is at the center because it is not applicable. So, you get a very mm, visual picture for showing the qualitative comparison. If we go back to home again because now we want to do now we want to do a life cycle design evaluation on this normal. So, in case of simplified what you saw you had the criteria. So, I have my criteria I have all my guidelines and I am not scoring against each guideline, I am scoring, scoring it on an overall mm, basis. In normal what you try to do is, you try to score each and every uh, sub criteria also. So, say I got radical improvement here, I got uh, mm, worse over here, I became incremental improvement, I have radical improvement, I have got again radical improvement, I got not applicable in this context, worse and no improvement. So, here you can see you have got 55 percent. Say if I made it radical improvement, radical improvement, it already increased to 73 percent. Now, how do you qualify that one? So, here there is a score chart. It says if your score is between 76 to 100 percent, you can put it as radical improvement. So, here you can see my score is 73 percent. So, it is a incremental um, improvement. Say I change it to radical improvement. So, automatically because it became 75 percent, your uh, score over here, overall score, score got to radical improvement. So, in normal um, uh, mode, you are doing at the sub strategy level as well. So, you repeat the process for each and every criteria. Then when I go back to home, let us go back to the radar, I will select over here normal. So, I will get a mm, different kind of radar. Be careful because in this particular context, you can see that by default all of them are filled with no improvement. So, that is why no improvement. So, by default values are already filled. So, even when you go to this radar for normal, you will always see that if you have not filled something, it is at this particular level. So, do not get confused because it will happen so because it is automatically filled with no improvement everywhere. Then let us see the deep evaluation. So, the deep evaluation as the name suggests is really in depth evaluation. So, for use intensification you have one chart. So, you have six different charts for this, one chart for each criteria. So, then I have my sub criteria designing an appropriate lifespan, designing reliability. So, all my sub criteria are mm, mentioned, then my questions are mentioned. So, are all lifespan identical for all products? So, I can say yes, I can say partially, I can say no. So, if you insert 1 in the check box to select yes, then it means you are saying you are giving score to 1, yes. So, I said 1 over here. So, you can see that total answers and the percentage of yes is 25 percent. 
let us say this one was completed partially only, this was completed uh, the done yes and here I have a no. So, now you have total answers, so you can see applicable checklist is 4, total given answers is 4. So, this should tally, once they tally you know that you have not made any error, you cannot have yes and partially yes, in case you do something of that you have this missing answers 1, minus 1. So, your number of questions and total given answers should match. Now, I know that I have got 50 percent on ye, uh, yes, partially on uh, 25 percent and no 25 percent. Again, let us fill up this one. So, once this whole chart is filled up, we can go to the next chart. So, you can see there is an arrow over here, it takes you to the, because there are lots of sub criteria and each one of them needs to be met. So, in this particular case rather than going to this board, if you go to this board you will go to the next criteria, you will not be going to the next sub criteria. So, you should click on these arrows, this shows me that there is one sheet or maybe mo more sheets over here, this shows that I have more sheets on this direction. So, when all my sheets are completed, you do not have anything over here, then you can go to the next one and similar strategy will be followed. Once you have completed everything, you can go to the summary sheet. So, here the data is automatically populated. So, you can see because I filled up something over these places. So, automatically it is saying because there is 19 percent yes, partially is 3 percent and no is 3 percent, it is giving a uh, judgment that it is worsening of the situation. Again you repeat the same process, so once this whole chart is complete, you go to the radar diagram, here you can select deep and you can do the analysis. In this particular context, everything is set to 0 0 percent by default which means worse, as a result you can see that this kind of a diamond, uh, this kind of a hexagon will be visible to you on the radar diagram, if you have not done any modifications to it. So, this completes how to use this particular mm, uh, mm, toolkit and I hope you can use some of these aspects and see how you can bring in environmental mm, improvement to your product or system design. Please remember that this toolkit is only meant for environmental aspects. So, it is a life cycle design strategy. So, it is in connection with our lectures that we did for life cycle design strategy. The other lectures that we did were quantitative analysis. So, quantitative analysis has its own advantages, but it does not help you to design at that point of time. Whereas, this one helps you to design because it gives you so many checklists. So, as a result it becomes a very important tool to be able to design. There is no escape from the quantitative uh, calculations after you have completed your design. Mm, you should always go back and do a quantitative analysis. Another thing which I missed on to was this, in this radar diagram you can again see these boxes. So, you can write down in these boxes also like what was your main design features or main design interventions that you did in order to get the toxicity reduction. In case you do that, then this page can be very easily printed. So, this page is already set with printable area. If you remain within that printable area, you can very easily print this page and put it into your uh, report. So, now we have already come to an end of our uh, course. So, in our last lecture, we will do a summary of all that we have learned till now and we will also try to see all the connections which we can now more appreciate because we have learned a lot more about sustainability and design for sustainability. Thank you.